Yo, what's up guys, it's Ryan, and today I'm going to be doing a quick walkthrough of my track Stay, um, and how it got made, and how all the sounds, like, kind of come together. Um, so yeah, let's jump right into it. It's the most um, involved of the three I recently released. So the first thing we've got are these guitars. recorded those obviously because why would I not um, and for the beginning part I've got this EQ that's kind of taking out all of the information except for the middle part and then it comes all in right here like a pitch shifted octave version of it just to kind of add some more space or fill out some more space um, on the guitars I've got RC retro color so let's take this off it just adds a little bit of like unevenness um, with this wobble setting and some reverb with this space um, we've got this fab filter which just kinda brings it back and makes it a little bit more usable um, have this virtual mix rack which is just acting as a preamp and compressor, really. So without it. As you can see, there's hardly any gain reduction happening. So it's super subtle. Um, but it does do something. this glue compressor right here which I'm honestly not sure when that turns off let's find out so it's on for the first part and then it gets turned off and also at this hit right here that is both of these parts or this part doesn't do anything It's an octave up of that, and it just goes straight to mono, just for some uh, contrast. All right, and then we've got the marimba also, um, and it has that same sort of EQ thing going. Uh, I'm using East West uh, Play Library. an echo for delay obviously some Valhalla room for some reverb uh, glue compressor just to keep that all in check and then at the very end there's a uh, or second to end there's <coughs> excuse me there's an RC color that adds some noise some wobble some a little bit of distortion some digital bit crushing and some vinyl magnetic sort of wear and tear so without it it sounds like this and then with so it does a lot to that sound and I'm pretty sure it turns off right when the uh, chorus or what I'm calling the chorus uh, comes on yeah and then it's off until the very end again where it's just this part repeated. Um, the drums have a, the same sort of EQ going. Uh, but then it comes full in right here. Alright, so we got this kick right here. And I've just got 
a little bit of EQ on it, and by a little bit, I mean a lot. Gotta take out some of that high end. If you got two snares, one of them has a little bit of a lead in right there, which gives it a nice kind of not so sterile and perfect feel. Um, I've just got some EQ, some reverb, and then the other one, probably the same thing, some EQ, and then some reverb. And I should note that almost every instrument and or sample is getting run into the uh, reverb channel. <laughs> So, take that for what it's worth. And the reverb channel is just the Studio Alpha uh, preset, the hollow room, and a low cut or a high cut, whichever one. High pass filter. Um, we've got this hi hat right here. Super subtle one in the background. Took out a lot of the volume out of the high end because without it it was kind of piercing so just kind of chilled it out a little bit we have this loop that I made with a uh, a shaker sample um, and it's a negative 56 so it is very in the background <laughs> Um, we got this light ride, which just has some EQ and some reverb. And cymbal crash, which has some echo, super simple, uh, some reverb, and then some EQ. And we've got this riser right here. And just like everything else, EQ, reverb. Um, and that's kind of it for the drums, really. Pretty sure we got this. That sort of noisy hat sample. Um, put back up here. You've got the sub that comes in. And the sub is just an operator. That's getting FM'd a little bit. Like just a little bit. Um, and then a saturator for some grit. Without it, it sounds like this. So it may as well just be a sine wave. And then two compressors, uh, side chaining the kick and the snare. We have the uh, arpeggio that comes in. And that is a serum patch. Um, t one si saw wave, my bad. Three voices. Uh, compressor in here, uh, delay right after the compressor. This envelope is super, super quick, like a pluck. Um, and that's it in here. It's like the most basic patch you can possibly make. Then an OTT, just to give it some bite, you know. Um, this RC retro color. which just makes it a little more retro. I'm using the VHS uh, preset right here. Um, we got this fab filter, which is just doing things, very small things to uh, make it sit better in the mix. Some reverb, because everything has reverb. Um, and then we have this uh, EQ that kicks in right. 
right here. I'm pretty sure almost every instrument has one on it. Um, another guitar part comes in at that part too. Has a sampler preset and this EQ. Um, you got this pad right here, which I honestly forget what it is, and it's freezing up. So this is actually from the, where is it, uh, the Retro Synths uh, pack that came with Ableton 10. Sweet. It's the Gronar patch. Um, has this EQ because I didn't want any low end. It's got a very like 1975 sound to it. Um, got this auto filter that kind of like sweeps up and down. And then reverb, obviously. Um, uh, what else? We've got this tom fill, which is just a brake tweaker tom that I threw in a sampler. This is the EQ. Make it super like doofy, but it works. Um, oh, I've got a banjo that comes in. It's just out of east-west play. Uh, glue compressor, EQ. I just wanted like the chime. I get these reverses. And that, is, excuse me, that is just the first note of this lead line uh, recorded with a ton of reverb on it and then bounced and reversed. Um, but speaking of the lead line, then this lead comes in. And it goes up the octave. And this is uh, actually another retro synth patch um, called the Brixton lead um, and everything's pretty default I think uh, and if it's not here's the settings um, it's got a glue compressor and some echo and some RC color because I've been using this a ton lately without it, it sounds like this just makes it old school um, and adds a ton of noise, apparently. Has this EQ, just to kind of take out a lot of the low end. Um, some reverb. And then a utility that kicks in. Uh, I think it just stays on, honestly. Yeah, it just stays on. Um, yeah. Uh, then we have these other guitars that come on come in. A little bit of the same sort of uh, retro-y stuff. Also highly recommend this VST. It's like awesome for like 70 bucks. Um, this EQ to just make it sit in the background because that's what I wanted at this section. Hey, it's important, but it's not the most important thing going on. And then we have this lead guitar. Which has... The lead one has a bit of saturation on it. Just a little bit. Um, and then I've got the same, like audio file 
transposed up and down an octave, so it's like an octave machine. <laughs> Hence the glue compressor to just kind of rein it all in. We have this EQ right here just to make it sit the way I wanted it to. Um, some light delay and a virtual mix rack, um, which is acting as another compressor. And some revival is kind of like a, it adds some high end and some body to it. So without it. <laughs> CPU is currently dying, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over. Um, and hope this doesn't crash. Yeah, that's a 20% 20, 20 CPU. Um, so there's that. And it sounds pretty good in the mix, I think. <laughs> The e the uh sorry the echo is pretty noticeable, but the um the fact that it's stacked isn't super obvious. But if you take it away, then it loses like every bit of body that that uh it has like. In it because of the stacking um, and then it just repeats again but the Brixton lead goes an octave up um, and then it goes back into this same thing there uh, then it transitions into this part and also the pad is literally just playing this same thing for the entire time it's a D uh, D2 chord no 3 um, let me get into this section right here. I didn't label this, so, um, we got this. We have this EQ right here. That's it. And I just use these utilities as a signal boost. So they're not really doing much, except for just bringing it up to level. Um, then we have the solo, which is the main part. And I recorded this in two takes, because I'm trash. And, uh, and then just kind of comped the two together. Um, so this only has, this actually doesn't have anything on it. There's just a fab filter up here, uh, doing this sort of thing. And then a virtual mix rack, uh, acting as a preamp with some, some drive, doing the same sort of body and shimmer thing. And then compressing. And this compressor is actually doing a lot. It's going to like 10 GR. stack the two or I stack an octave up just to uh, give it some extra character and then the Brixton lead does the same sort of thing where it goes up an octave so I like kind of copied that with the guitars it's super subtle but it's there right back into that intro thing. Um, something I forgot to mention about the drums though. 
is that it, part of what makes it sound good is this drums compression channel. Which is just a channel that it, the drums bus is getting sent to and it's compressing it relatively hard with a really high ratio at a low threshold. So it's a lot of transient and then it just gets mixed in. And that made it sound a lot better, I think at least. Um, gave it some more punch and all the rest. Things that people would typically want with uh, um, drums. Then we've got the master channel. So I've got a utility boosting at 4 dB because I mix and produce super quietly. Um, so I just needed some boosts right out the gate. And then we have an Ozone 8 um, with a vintage compressor. Just kind of level things out. As you can see, it's averaging at like 0 0.6, 0 0.7 um, dB of gain reduction. So it's not really doing a whole ton. It's more for the character of the, uh, the tape. Um, we've got an equalizer, and the side has a high pass on it, or yeah, high pass, taking out the low end um, in the side, which is like it just makes things cleaner. And then I've got this mid uh, EQ, and it's kind of insane. Um, really low, or taking out a lot of low end, adding a bit of like mid highs or high mids, whatever it's called. But if you take this off, it it just is way muddier. And the uh, the focus on this EP was mainly like just have being like really tight with the mix you know um so i did my best to kind of clean all that up uh we've got this compressor right here which i actually don't know if it's doing anything because i think i tweaked some settings over here and then the ratio is still at 1, which is, like, it doesn't do anything. So, that's probably, honestly, not doing anything. We've got this dynamic EQ. So, on certain frequencies hit too hard, the EQ ducks them and kind of takes care of some of the volume. Um, which is super nice and super helpful. Uh, that's might be my favorite thing about ozone um then there's the maximizer which is the one giving it all the volume because if i take that off like that's the volume i mix and master at it's like negative 30 rms um and it needs to be like what negative six <laughs> Negative nine is this song, um, but I'm using IRC four. The ceiling is zero. Uh, true peak prevents clipping. Um, and then the threshold is all the way down. And that's also why I needed that a uh, 40 V boost with that utility right there. And I think that might be it. I don't know if the delay channel is being used at all. Doesn't sound like it is. Um, I've got this 
tonal balance control. Which I kind of kind of ignored because I liked the way it sounded. Um, and then I've got this mono fab filter where when I press M, like the, the keyboard M. It switches between mono and stereo, and that makes mixing super easy. Um, so yeah, that's basically the track. Uh, I forgot to name that as well. Um, so if you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, like, comment, subscribe, do all that, and I'll see you in the next video.